Hey everybody, this is Carl with Trilobite Studios, and today I'm joined by... Josh. And we are going to be talking about the ecology of Isla Nublar. Um, in short, it doesn't really work. Uh, for this cast, well, it's not really a cast, for this discussion, discussion. I'm going to kind of just let Josh take the reins, because this is obviously his uh, dominion, <laughs> but um, tis. Uh, this is more his dominion than it is mine. I'm more on the biology... Well... I'm excited to do this one because, like, from a biologist's point of view, I can, like, really tear into this and be like, oh, this is really silly. Um, oh, it's completely silly. I mean, when you start looking at these numbers uh, for this island, and not only that, but the populations of some of these animals, I think you yourself are going to be very surprised on um, what... There is. Yeah. No, we were we were doing some calculations in the kitchen. Yeah, we we're doing uh, <laughs> some quick calculations uh, for some of the animals, and their populations are just even as a running theme park. I'm like, how would you even do this? Yeah. So let's talk about first of all, how big is the island totally? Uh, the movie canon uh -huh. states that the Isla Nublar is 77 square miles. Okay. Um, so in kilometers, that's what, like 152? Yeah, I Something believe like so. I, I'm, I, I, I don't know that. It, it's like 152 kilometers. I have to do that math, but I haven't actually s sat down and did that. Right. But for, at, for our American listeners, uh, 77 square miles. For everybody in Europe, about 150 kilometers. Um, now, we're going to be talking about right when 2015, the Indominus Rex breakout yeah the incident the incidents that closed jurassic world and probably a little bit before that because we had to set the stage um so looking at the map here uh and we'll put up a picture of it in the actual uh video um this is the layout for 2015 jurassic world it broke up into about six sections technically there is a seventh um which is somewhere around in here uh around the aviary area um yeah it 77 square miles in about 50 species yeah <laughs> I it's, mean, in, yeah. it's incredible that to think that even even as a zoo yeah i mean the fording a cost the co just the sheer cost on feeding some of these animals would be outrageous. Yeah, like all the, uh, like the parasaurs and the uh, and the sauropods and, I mean, because what what's the estimation is that sauropods ate like two tons of food a day or something like that. Um, not to mention you've got all the big you've got your like the triceratops and then you've got the carnivores who are eating like hundred at least hundreds of pounds of meat every single day on this little island as a, even as a zoo we were talking about this as well before we started the cast it wouldn't really work it's just not viable to have that many animals i mean there are places that do it like safari parks but yeah this but is safari... a lot bigger than modern fauna <laughs> i mean yeah but safari parks you know they might have an elephant but for the majority of them they probably go with giraffes or a rhino which is eating far less yeah. food. Yeah, exactly. Now, you said earlier, uh, how how much do you think a Brachiosaurus would eat? Like two tons? Try day? Well, I just looked it up, and okay. it said four, uh, 440 pounds of food. A day? Yeah. Oh, so I was, I was way off. Not only were you way off, but <laughs> even still, if you look at the estimates of how many Brachiosaurus were on Isla Nublar at the time of Jurassic World, uh collapse we have a total population of 23 animals that's a lot 23 times 20 440 per day yeah that's that i i'm not very good at multiplication now yeah some of those animals were juveniles and they're probably going to be picked off fairly quickly but the sheer fact that there's still 23 animals of this ungodly magnitude. That's five tons of food a day. For a herd of 23 animals. For a animals. herd of 23 animals, it's uh, 10,120 pounds. So about uh, 4,000 some kilo. So just with Brachiosaurus, 
Okay, this is, you know, a giant sauropod from the Morrison Formation. Which, by the way, the population of Isla Nublar is actually the more, more higher than the population, or the actual number of <laughs> bones we have for the animal. That's kind of funny. I think there's 12 on the book. That's really funny, actually. And yet there's like 20, a whole population uh, on uh, Isla Nublar. Yeah. Okay, so... Now... From a perspective of a zoo, just, I mean, how much does an, one elephant eat? That's a good question. I guess we'll have to Google that too. I mean, because I know reptiles, because well, let's be honest, even though dinosaurs are weren't blooded, they're not, they don't have the same metabolism as a mammal. Yeah. So they don't need as much food, but they still need a large quantity. But what's the di difference between you know an elephant's uh daily intake and the you know it's not as much as you would expect how much uh question how much do the zoo's elephants eat in a day answer the zoo's five african elephants uh well okay that's all five uh eat between 100 and 400 pounds of food a day but that's between all five so you divide 400 by five which gives you like 90 ish pounds each i mean that's still a lot of food 80 pounds each. Okay, so 80 pounds of food for, I'm assuming, you said African elephants? Yeah, African elephants. And they're eating constantly. Yes. So, yeah, the freaking food bill for this place must be outrageous. Well, I think that went without saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's literally a dino ton. <laughs> it's literally a dino ton. Um, okay, so what 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 we're trying to figure out here is how on earth did it last the dinosaurs survive for three years before fallen kingdom it's like yeah, they should be they... dead before the damn volcano so this is where it gets really fun for me because as uh as like a biology well not a student anymore but it was somebody uh, with an a, interest with a degree i have a degree in biology it's a minor but i have it um uh, with a degree in biology it's really interesting to think about because species um oh my god what's it called partition density or density okay uh species density the amount of species that a certain area can hold right uh there's also a term for that i want to say it's like the it's like the something limit i don't remember exactly what it was it's been two years since i've graduated um it's basically like how many species can an island hold or how many species can a certain ecosystem hold and how many species did we say escaped um or are now living free on the island at the time of the island's closing about 50 so give or take you're looking at 70 square miles 77 square miles yep 77 square miles with 50 species so on average you're you have about one species per mile like 0. 0.7 species per square mile i mean that's silly <laughs> i mean to be honest at what point did uh in the movie would we see literally dinosaurs back to back short stacked in like a freaking uh yeah uh you know like in like the bottom, a back of a truck like in the know? bottom of the lockwood manor i mean yeah but you know on a tropical island i mean yeah i it, not only like if you think about we just said that sauropods ate 400 each. Ate no, 400. That was just brachiosaurus. Bra just brachiosaurus. Ate 440 brachiosaurus. pounds of food a day. And then you... And there's 23 of them, which is 5 tons of food a day. You have to think about, like... Also, there are areas of that island that are just plains. We've seen that. Yeah, it's... Uh, a good portion of it is open grassland. So... Which... Fun we, fact... None of these dinosaurs have the teeth. To I was about to say in uh, grass. None of the dinosaurs, especially the sauropods, have the the teeth to or the the build to eat the grass. So like, not only is it limited even more because some of it's just worthless grassland, but you have these creatures that are eating massive amounts of food a day. They would have stripped the island in months. Not even. Not even months. I know, less than a week, probably. I know it's a tropical island, but it, I mean, think about it. when you're taking. You have 23, and we're still sticking with just Brachiosaurus for right now. Uh, but there is an Apatosaurus, which is a, a mid, you know, a lower tier tree eater. But still, it's, you have two very large sauropods on the island yeah. with 
um, a good amount of animals. 23 brachiosaurs is not something to, you know, to laugh at. And then you look at the apatosaur numbers and, you know, it's, uh, hold on, I, I gotta look this up again. Uh, it's 25 animals. That's, I mean, you're literally having 25 on, of these, uh, giant animals eating on the same island and you know they're going to be eating the same type of tree yeah it, it's not i mean within a week this uh the entire population of dinosaurs on isla nublar should have been gone yeah at that point it's not even a question of like resource partitioning it's a question of how long can the island last against this onslaught yeah i mean because there is no such thing as resource partitioning when you have uh animals that are all competing for the same for the same food in such a short period of time now if it, it was if it was a natural event like if maybe a small population got onto the island somehow then yeah you know it could work because the, it would the population would uh regulate itself and they would make well, uh, and now, they would add and it would uh, you know adapt over time in order to live on the island it's uh dwarf it's like dwarfism yeah in i mean I, I i get that and there actually was a dwarf uh brachiosaur from europe um uh, however in that situation you're also having predators yeah, no. with the and there are carnivores on this island don't get me wrong but the sheer number of herbivores even with carnivores I, I know attacking and eating them it still would not have lasted as long as it yeah, supposedly and, and did let's even talk about like ecologically the, the natural ecosystem that was already there, this is like a cataclysmic type event. Like, as soon as those animals get out, oh, the, this all the really, other populations of animals are... All the uh, native, uh, like, tropical birds, the amphibians, uh, nor the normal reptiles, and even some of the uh, mammals from before uh, this island became, you know, a dinosaur paradise, were already probably feeling the pressure from you know just human presence yeah, in dinos the, in the dinosaurs yeah so this this basically plus now that you know the dinosaurs are running loose this whole island should have been you know kia within like the first week i would say i'd say a month i wouldn't give it a month you wouldn't give it a month no because like we said we had tw uh 25 apatosaurs we have 23 brachiosaurs these guys are eating uh for almost 400 pounds of food a day for these animals yeah as i was saying yeah there's carnivores but one carnivores don't always uh succeed in eating uh, well also and car carnivores only hunt when they're hungry except well, for the indominus rex no lions kill just because they can't oh uh, lions will kill a cheetah just because it can't well normally when carnivores hunt they only hunt because they're hungry well yeah so what i'm I, I don't, mean, and, you know, maybe you people would want to bring up the argument where, like, if enough carnivores were were released at the same time, then the the speed, like, it would just regulate itself, right? Okay. Well, I have some numbers for carnivores. Okay. Yeah. Um, estimation wise, uh, there are seven allosaurs. Yes. Now we know allosaurus was a sauropod hunter. It was, but it was a pack hunter. Maybe. Maybe. We're, it, it's on the fence. Let's, let's it's on, say... For, it's on the fence uh, about pack scenario. hunting. It's, it's on the fence about pack hunting. However, for the scenario, we have seven uh, allosaurs on the island. Now, we know this guy's going to be going after the stegosaurs. We know they're going to go after Parasaurolophus and other hedgesaurs and possibly the Gallimimus. But, you know, that's still... You got... Uh, a bunch of carnivores packed in together. You have all these giant, I do mean giant uh, herbivorous animals packed down to a small island. There's no way it would have lasted a month. I mean, my only thing is that I that I think about is even without the help of the Indominus Rex just slaughtering shit, the, it, it, there's no way. My, my, my thought logic here is that why it would last a month is because it just takes time to move, to walk to like the farthest outreaches of the island to like get down to the like the very bottom of the island to get to the very top of the island. Plus, there there there's still the man-made barriers in place, right? Like well, the, some of them, yeah. Yeah, the event didn't like 
completely just destroy all the man-made barriers. So like not all these. Yeah, but most of the main, the man-made barriers are around the central uh, lagoon area. Right. Everything else was invisible fences. And once the power goes out, which kind of did at, uh, fairly quickly, because no one's maintaining the. That's true. I mean, even if, say, because I think Claire said uh, that the dinosaurs themselves kind of made their tracking device, uh, heat up their tracking device. They were like a self made battery. Yeah. Even with that, I mean, there should have been like all, all these attractions where it's kind of like the uh, invisible fences. All the dinosaurs inside that should have still been dead within, you know, because that just limited the uh, populations even more. I think, well, my, my thing is also because they were so condensed into such small areas, except for like the Western Plains where they had more area to move not much but yeah <laughs> right but they were they were kind of condensed into the central part of the island or where the park was it would just take them time to move out because we i mean we don't really know how far sauropods would well we do we have an estimate on how far sauropods would travel to get enough food um for one day i don't know exactly but um right here uh in this little area right here in section three right south of the park uh in camp cretaceous they said that they were holding about 14 sauropods uh brachiosaurus actually okay uh by the time they found baby bumpy which is right after the indominus you know tears up the uh um the gyrosphere with the two brothers in it the brachiosaurus has moved over here to where it says brachiosaurus valley oh wow so they moved all that I mean, I don't know how many, you know. Does this this map doesn't have a scale, does it? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't see one. Damn. Um, I mean that's still pretty far if we know that the the island is a total of seventy seven square kilometers. Yeah, I'm I'm saying I mean like these. It's basically what I'm trying to say is this, uh. Island should not have been, you know, there shouldn't have been a rescue mission, you know, three years later. Yeah, to save the dinosaurs. To save the dinosaurs from a volcano. The I dinosaurs mean, would most, have already been wiped out. Most of the animals would have been wiped out long before then. I think, I think the larger species would have absolutely been wiped out. But you know what I, I think we're forgetting to take into account is that there are still smaller species. Oh, and, yeah, there are smaller species, but and here's... So I feel like... The smaller species could have hung on a little bit longer, but there's still no way they would have been there three years later. Like, obviously, you know, the sauro, like the brachiosaurus and the apatosaurus, they would gonna, have been extinct. Yeah, they're going to be extinct in a month or two. They're going to go through and strip all the trees, and there's, and you know, once they take all all the high vegetation and even all the mid vegetation, after that, they're going to just die off. But then we have smaller things like the compies, and we have smaller. What are some of the smaller herbivores that we have on the island? Uh, Pachycephalosaurus. Uh, Gallimimus, I guess, uh, Microceratus. Um, uh, these I... are smaller animals. So uh, those are like lower level browsing animals. These, yeah, they're, they're going to be they're for, going the, for shrubs, like shrubs. the ferns and stuff. Right. But even though, then, then you have the, you know, the, the mid-sized to larger predators, even though, yeah, technically they're not, you know, it's that whole, why fight a mouse? Why would a lion eat a mouse and not a yeah, zebra? Yeah. But when that's all you have, that that's what you're going to be going for. And that's going to take a huge population. Yeah, that, just would, that would hit the population them. chunk too. I, I think that at the most, for total dinosaur extinction on the island and just total eco, ecological collapse, you're looking at a year. For Three. the entire uh, island to be devoid of dinosaurs to yeah i would be, say yeah, yeah about a year of, to completely be wiped out of dinosaurs it would take about a year yeah because there's just not well, enough resources on the island to sustain well, not only that you any have, population you have for that long sometimes double or two to three species uh in the same family group which would going to be uh eating the, yeah, you know they're, they're going to be competing, competing for the, for the same, same resources food. so um for example there are uh, there's actually four, but there's, yeah, there's four, uh, ceratopsians 
the, the mid-sized to larger ceratopsians on this island. We have, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Pachyrhinosaurus, which I've only found two. Okay. Um, Nasutoceratops, which we only know of two adults. Okay. Uh, Triceratops, there were about 23. Okay. And Sinoceratops, there's about 13. I, I, you know, I, I mean, these are, you know, rhino size or more. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. And they're all going to be eating the same type of food. Not that they're, you know, eating, um, different they're going to be going yeah, for that. They're, they're uh, all going for the like the lower bushes, mid browser. They're going to be they're a mid browser with for bushes. Yeah. So and you know something else that I don't think we're taking into account because I could see something like that. You know, because relatively, uh, you know what? Not even relatively. It is. It's too small. Because <laughs> like seventy, like how many? There were twenty three tri triceratops. You said yeah, twenty three. Thirteen sinoceratops. And two of the other. And four total other. Ceratopsians. So 23 and 13, 36 plus 4, that's 40. That's like 0.6 animals per square mile. Yeah, it's stupid. It's really kind of dumb now that I think about it. Yeah, more. It, it, the more you think about this, it's the worse it gets. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, you know what? Maybe, maybe not even a year for total dinosaur extinction. Maybe. Because not only are they, you know, going to be like starving. Six months. Because not only are they going to be starving. You're gonna have species on species fighting. Mm -hmm. Interspecies. Uh, yeah, in, interspecies and other species. Yeah. Because Triceratops is not gonna. It's the biggest guy in the Ceratopsian. He's gonna probably take over. Yeah. Uh, whatever food you're eating. He's gonna edge out all the other Ceratopsians. Or even all the other like mid browsers. Um, you know they're gonna fight with the Stegos. Yeah. They're gonna fight with the Ankylosaurs. Oh yeah, you're gonna get. You're gonna have not only you know. There's going to be freaking dino combat carnage everywhere. Yeah. It's going to... You're going to have starving animals. You're... It's... You know, something else we haven't even talked about yet is the water resources. Yeah, true. Uh, I mean... Like the fresh water resources, which is... It's not much. I mean, we have several rivers and ponds and stuff, but yeah, in general, it's not really that much. Can you imagine, like, the ponds after two or three months... Of like there's a lot of shit yeah it's one big pile of shit <laughs> like um they will be so nasty by that point we don't i don't remember the animals uh, won't even be able to drink out of it i don't remember when uh supposedly uh but apparently uh when the whole volcano starts showing signs uh-huh uh, algae blooms started happening in some of the water sources, which yeah. are it's going to be poisonous to any animal. Yeah, that now it's it. just full of ammonia. So you put that on top of what it, you know, whatever dino crap uh, Was resources there. there are. I mean, again, you're, you're looking about like two weeks possibly. Yeah. Of um, the ecosystem surviving. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, the algae blooms, and then there would be so many. Because I, I, I'll... You have corpses, dinosaur shit, algae blooms. Algae and, blooms I from mean, all that because there's an excess of... A, see, this is all the nitrogen cycle because I, I, I do fish keeping. So, like, when you have excess ammonia, you get algae blooms because, you know, there's an extra... There's more resources, so the algae can use it more efficiently yeah. than the other plants because it's a single cell. It's a diatom. Yeah. So you get the algae bloom, but then that algae uses up all those resources, uses up all the oxygen in the water, and now that water is a anaerobic. But not only that, it's just uh, it's poisonous to drink. Yeah, exactly. And that's why it's because it's anaerobic. And now you, you you get into a vicious cycle where you've got this anaerobic water, no more resources in it, so that all the algae dies off. But then, oh no, there's a lot of ammonia back into the water because the algae died off, so the algae comes back. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like... <laughs> freaking black mold it comes back no yeah, matter you, what algae is just it's it's one of those so humans. yeah as like i was saying the whole you know fallen kingdom movie should never have happened no it shouldn't have happened they Be should you know maybe they should have done that and instead of using the volcano they should have used like ecological meltdown i think that was kind of what they were going with with the whole volcano just being the tip of the speed oh, the, the, the the whole coup de gras right. at the end I mean, to be honest, at this point, I'm with Dr. Malcolm. Uh, ha should just let him die. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, 
we left them for three years the just the sheer freaking cruelty on this uh of high, high with such a it, high population it's it's just let them die at this hunger point. games but dino edition basically like it really would be yeah. i mean at this point just let the whole the island's pretty much done for yeah, the, anyway just let it go it's headed for ecological disaster. it was heading for it the day you locked the door yeah i i think now that we've talked a little bit more about it i think my first my initial estimate of a year was too much i think six months and after six months you're looking at total now at six months is when the whole opening scene of them going to the island and getting the indominus rex out yeah, of the lake yeah that was the six months after closing yeah but here's a question how did the mosasaur survive for six months it's a good question it's in a lagoon landlocked with no food that's sources. salt water well okay to be fair we did see it spring out of the water at the end of the movie to okay eat but the that indominus. was because the indominus kind of fell in and then pulled itself out right and like a crocodile it was on it so maybe other animals but would, would, okay, it's salt water uh, right, no but, animals gonna uh, but, but, just go up to it and try to drink well, out they, of it. they wouldn't know it yeah well you they'll smell it they go oh that's salt water i'm not drinking that yeah i i mean point. to be honest it's probably the only water that didn't have uh you know algae in it yeah so because of the salt yeah well i mean algae can bloom in in salt water too oh it does yeah algae oh. algae is a given anywhere you go it's just different oh. types of algae well never mind then because anytime you get into I water mean, you're gonna have algae here's my question how did the because I, I i've had a fish yeah and i know if you don't take care of the filtration it goes down really fast it sure does so six months oh yeah no that that, that one the lagoon should have been murky as all Mosa, hell the mosasaur nasty. would have been dead the mosasaur should have been dead well okay may, well i maybe mean not yeah, it's an air breather yeah, it's i an get air that breather. and normally what happens with uh dirty but, fish tanks let me, let me go on a tie right here for a second most normally what happens with dirty fish tanks and the reason that the fish die in it uh from the ammonia is because uh the ammonia builds up and it burns their lungs it burns like the, their gills and it burns their lungs. So if you have a lot of ammonia in your tank, eventually that burn will turn into a scar tissue, which won't function anymore. So when you have too much ammonia in your fish tank, it's a very slow, painful death for your fish because it's basically being slowly poisoned to death. The ammonia is building up. It's burning their lungs. It's burning everything. It's burning their gills and then they die. So, you know, if, if the Mosasaur had a food source, because it is an air breather, the ammonia wouldn't have been that big of an issue. Okay, but also, you have the Indominus Rex carcass. Yeah. Several pteranodons were uh, went into it. Yes. The Mosasaurus is going to be eating the ancient cra crapping. Yeah. It's salt water. The filtration has gone down. Yeah. For six months, I highly doubt that animal is going to survive that. I think, like I said, because the ammonia... Now, they it, moved... There was a continuity error, but they moved uh, the main hub down to the coast. Yeah. Which, if you look at the gates, they had filtration into the actually open water. Okay. Which is how the Mosasaurus gets out. Yeah. Which, we all know... Is silly. Doesn't make any sense. If you look at the 2015 map, you're dead center in the island. Yeah, it's a bit silly. Um, I mean, if it, that was the case, then yeah, I can see the Mosasaurus surviving because it has that fresh water coming in. There are fish swimming through that area and possibly a small shark or two. I mean, it would have been really dirty water, but again, the am ammonia kills fish by poisoning them. It's not that big. That's why people can p keep betta fish in such shitty conditions like a tiny bowl because or they a also tiny cup. Are air breathers. Yeah, because they have a labyrinth organ so they can breathe the air so they don't I have mean, to I mean, I know there are fish out there that can live in more um, disgusting water. Yeah. And beta fish actually are one of them. Suck air through their mouth. It's but, like a mud skipper. Yeah. Um so I really think that if if the mosasaur would have had food, it could have survived. Like yeah, that water would have been nasty. Like anything else that would have touched it, it would they would have died, but you could it could have survived potentially if it had food but then again uh other than the indominus you know falling in and you know the pteranodons that got tranked and then fell in yeah they drowned yeah 
but what, how would they even, you know, what animal would smell salt water and go, yeah, let's try this. I mean, then again, it also is a reptile. So it's a, it's a, it's an ectotherm. So maybe it only needs to eat every six months. Like, you know, kind of like a big snake. Or like, Maybe, but they were feeding it like every two hours. Sure, but they only fed it very small amounts. They fed it great whites. The indomitable. Yeah, they but are... compared to the size of the mosasaur we see you on screen. You mean the size of a blue whale? Yeah, the mosasaur. size of the mosasaur that we see on screen. Is, I mean, that thing was giant. That's like a. That's literally like a like a single French fry to us. That's like not enough. You know, but if you eat the Indominus Rex, maybe you don't need to eat again for six months. Uh, maybe. I don't know. So. But then it begs the question, how did they find a fossil? Or how did they pull out the rib of the Indominus if that whole thing was basically do like a snake? Just eat the whole, you know, head first. Oh, just eat it whole? Yeah. I mean, maybe Mosasaur can't digest bone. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, that, uh, we don't know. I mean, it was the size of the Mosasaur that they, I mean, each film it gets Bigger. Yeah, it gets bigger and bigger. I'm like, because I remember the first trailer, and it's like, oh, that thing's a monster. Yeah. And then when it, you know, kills the Indominus, it's not really that big. Yeah. And now, and then now it's, you know, back it's to back being, to being a like, monster size. Like I'm like, what? Literal wave size when we see it in the trailer for Dominion. So. I mean, it was bigger than the boat, that crab boat. Yeah, it was bigger than, oh my god, it was bigger than the crab boat. And those boats are like 110 feet that, long Yeah, they're average. huge boats. Uh, uh, so I think we were kind of circling. Now, the, huh? one thing we forgot was the aviary. Yeah. Uh, cause we pretty much covered all the dinosaurs and the mosasaur. Yeah. Well, we covered the bigger dinosaurs and the, and the mosasaur, but I wanted to discuss with you about the aviary real quick. Okay. Um, now from what we got, from what I f- was figured, there is probably about 60 pteranodons. Yeah. And about, give or take. Give we, or take. we saw numbers that were saying as high as like 89. Uh, 86. 86. And then as and low then as like 40. 40. 40-ish. So, so we just cut it in the middle. So we cut it in the middle and say about 60. Um, And then there were about like 20-something pteranodons. Yeah. Now, given the fact that we've seen some of them get killed off in, or at least... Trank, tranked and then fall into the water uh in the in jurassic world during the uh um the shit show oh it was a shit yeah, show it, sure I mean, was. it was a shit show uh but my question is they they're obviously going to survive the yeah. pteranodons yeah because in fallen kingdom you know um uh, i mean at the end they they show them in las vegas but even before that they should have flown off to either like Hawaii oh, or, or even, something else, even, even like Sorna or something closer. Yeah, like one I of the mean, other one of the other five single the five deaths. Yeah. yeah, they they should have fl- they would have flown off and found other resources. I mean, also it's it's already theorized that like Pteranodon. Well, it's kind of an older theory, but like Pteranodon were skydivers, like sky fishers. I mean, skim feeders. Skin, yeah, skim feeders. They did die for what uh, fish. Yeah. So, or we, they would have ate, uh, you know, whatever. Washed yeah. Up so on I the beach. think that the pteranodon populations would have been fine. The, yeah, that's um, pteranodons. Yes. However, dromorphodon looks like it was a kind of a crappy flyer. Yeah, it sure does. So, especially the, the the one that is bred on Jurassic. You mean the or, giant or, rex head with little new, wings? Yeah. It's the little, weird bat looking thing. Yeah, with the weird tail. I mean, it did have the tail. It, it did have a tail. It did have a large head, but the head of it looked so it looks more like a narrow. Tyrannosaur. Then whatever you get on Jurassic World, yeah. where they looked like they chopped the head off a T Rex and, and so shrunk it down. Well, they shrunk it down, did some and, voodoo to it, you know, glued it to like a bat. Yeah. So, which is how you get COVID in Jurassic World, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that I think we're kind of circling back to the same conclusion. So how how long would you say the island would last, in your opinion, after after the event? If they're lucky, two weeks. You think really only two weeks? About two weeks, because we have a high population of carnivores. We have sort uh, large, very large um, herbivores that are going to be eating in excess of about four hundred pounds per food. We have uh, herbivores in the same niche fighting over each other, right? Trying to, re- and then you have just the freaking um, without human care uh, in stuff. It is probably be two weeks. 
Now, the smaller animals, like compies that breed like rats yeah. and can find food on the smallest of stuff, they're probably going to be fine. They're probably going to be fine even after the volcano takes out the northern part of the island. Because uh, if you look at the map, it shows like all the wind pushing like the soot and stuff out yeah. to the ocean yeah. towards the mainland. So the southern part of that island is fine. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm giving it about two weeks. I think for the larger animals. I think the larger animals maybe a month, maybe a month, and that's only like two. I'm giving them an extra two weeks just because, in I don't know how fast the animals move and how quickly they'd be able to strip the island. Obviously, we know that sauropods ate like insane amounts of food in an insane amount of time, but it's just a question of will they be able to access some parts of the like the of the of the map will they be able to get to some parts of the island are there some more like rocky regions that only certain other animals could get to are there certain parts of the island where uh they might have to circle around something to get to a, a resource so i'm giving it two months just for the or a month just for the variance now this takes place at in december of 2015 yeah um, about three months, I think it was, is when the Scorpius Rex breaks out. Okay. After power. Oh, up. I didn't even think about that. And now that thing went on a murder rampage. It sure did. So, yeah, I think two weeks for the rest of the animals after the Scorpius Rex gets wiped out is probably the best bet. Yeah, so about a month. Um, so a month to two weeks. Uh, give or take. We're talking all the big animals gone. I think for the smaller animals, I don't think... I, I It it really depends on how hard hit the like the local ecosystem already was um, for the smaller animals, especially like the compies, because I say for mid... Like, big animals, yeah, a month. And then for everything else, I'd say six months before total ecological just collapse. It, it, it because it, it depends on how how po- uh, affected the local populations already were like like the the lizards and the birds and everything else that was already on the island before the dinosaurs and now you've got like smaller uh, predators going for them and also competing with the local wildlife for like just herb like uh, herbivorous dinosaurs competing for the the same resources with the local wildlife so it depends on if the dinosaurs would be able to outcompete the local wildlife and if they would be able to effectively hunt the local wildlife especially the compies um we don't know would the compies be able to hunt like the birds would they be able to hunt the lizards if they do hunt the lizards then how long is it and if they're really good at it how long is it until they wipe out all the lizards well, and then they have to resort com- to cannibalism engines compies are venomous yes so even if they didn't you know a hundred percent attack a uh, success the, the bite's still gonna uh, do right, it. but I'm saying, like, how effectively would they be able to hunt those local species, and how effectively would they be able to hunt, or, and, you know, that you kind of made a, a, a better point for me, if they're that efficient at hunting, then they'll have wiped out the local populations within a Plus couple months. Plus, they also do mob hunting. Yeah, they do mob hunting. Also, they do, they would go after eggs for local, like, you know, the local populations in of lizards and, and, and the larger birds, animals. In the larger and the larger animals. animals. Everything will be dead by the six-month mark. Yeah, by the time including, Fallen including, Kingdom, including the compies, I'm not even. I don't even think the compies would survive up until Fallen Kingdom. I think they're dead at six. No, months. I'm saying the, uh, the just the opening of the comp, the uh, Fallen Kingdom, because remember that's yeah. In oh, six you're months saying, after you're the saying three game. months for total ecological. No, weapon. six months uh, is when they went back for the Indominus. Oh, okay. Which was the opening uh, Fallen Kingdom? Yeah, I think it was like another two years before the volcano. Yeah, so. Probably within that six month period, everything should have been done. Okay, I was gonna because I was gonna ask. That's you, what I was gonna. Ask. I was gonna ask you where do you, three, where do you think that at everything three months is, dead? is when uh, the scorpions happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see what so, you're saying. So yeah, about that six month mark when they go back for the Indominus, pretty much compies were probably be uh, in whatever pteranodons that are still kind of flying around. Yeah. They're co- you know living on the coast uh, in nesting colonies by now. Yeah, I think the I think pretty much everything else is done. I think all the terrestrial animals are done. I think the mosasaur maybe could have survived, <coughs> and I think the pteranodons would have been fine. Dimorphodon, 
maybe maybe not. maybe no. not maybe a very small population still clinging on by this point but Tyrannodon is fine mosasaur is up in the air depending on if it has access to any type of food um but everything else done yeah including local populations I don't know, the whole island's just dead yeah, it's, at that point. it's just a waste I of I mean, life. literally, the volcano is a godsend at that point. Yeah, at that point, anything that's left just wants to die. <laughs> so, I think that was a good art, uh, conversation there, don't you? I, I, do th I do, too. I think that uh, I'd really like to do a scripted video for this. Oh, yeah, definitely, if uh, you get into the more number yeah, crunching. Yeah, you, get, you like start crunching the numbers, and you look at the size of the island, and you do the estimate. Because I was just kind of guesstimating off the top of my head, like, how many animals I mean, per square mile and how many, like, uh, yeah, we were we were just kind of guesstimating here, but I, I'd really like to do a, a fully edited video for this one. What do you think? Yeah, de definitely. Okay. I, I definitely would like to look more into this. All right. Because it's a very interesting topic. It, it is. So, uh, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I do believe that would be L. Okay. So, do you want to take us out then? Yep. So, this is Josh. And Carl. From Trilobite Studios, signing out. Bye.